instruction is grounded in his ontology of the body, which emphasizes the importance of the body uh, in perception and action. For uh, Levinas, uh, I have very limited knowledge, but uh, uh, what I can say that Levinas argues that the relationship between the self and the other is not reciprocal because the other is not an object to be known, but rather a subject that this the self attempts uh, to know it. So uh, today uh, we are going to discuss and surely think over uh, this this idea of reciprocity and recognition after listening the lecture by Dr. Chander on the topic <clears throat> reciprocity and recognition and justice uh, engaging with Morris Morleponti and Levinas. So please welcome Dr. Chander and grace the program with your insightful thoughts. Please, sir, over to you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Shepard. Actually, uh, I don't know whether I would be able to do justice with these great thinkers as well as with, uh, with these uh, great audience. But let's start. I will try my level best to at least share something with you regarding these notions. Sir, so be be before you start, uh, yes. I would like to, uh, uh, to know that we have our supervisor, we both uh, our supervisor, Agat Oyam, sir, is here. Sir, please welcome. Oh, welcome, sir. It's nice to, sir, see you uh, after a long time. Yeah, he's Actually, joining. Recording in prog. Recording stopped. Yeah. Recording okay. in progress. Sir, so you, you can start now. Yeah. So, just as I said that we cannot directly come into the jump into the notion of reciprocity uh, or recognition. Uh, before this, we have to uh, understand the very notion of body or subjectivity. Only then we can understand the notion of intersubjectivity and then reciprocity or recognition and then ultimately justice. These are the, these are the issues or these are the things which are very much interrelated. So first of all, let me give a brief overview about these philosophers, their backgrounds. Actually, both these philosophers are post-World War philosophers. Their, their work or their writing, uh, whatever happened during the Second World War, their, their hardships, their atrocities, the violence, justice, whatever happens during the a kind of torture, at that point in time, these philosophers are philosophizing the notion of alternative notion of subjectivity because what was for them the notion of subjectivity is problematic itself because the dominant notion of perspective uh, uh, subjectivity was Cartesian notion of subjectivity at that point of time so because of the Cartesian notion of subjectivity they they they, they philosophize against this notion. Why this, this they, they philosophize that are they argued against the Cartesian notion of subjectivity. And what is the Cartesian notion of subjectivity? Both argue, since they both belong to the existential phenological school of thought, they both argue that Cartesian notion of subjectivity is something which does not recognize the other as other, but it objectifies the other. It, it perceives other as something just an object. It cannot do justice with the other. Why? Because the Cartesian notion of some uh, subjectivity is something which can, which can be understood as something uh, like mind, or pure mind, or consciousness. And it is a disembodied notion of subjectivity. It is, it is a historical subjectivity. It is beyond space and time. And it perceives the other from subject pole to the object pole. And with whatever it encounters, it objectifies. So object, the problem with Cartesian notion is that it objectifies everything. It does not recognize the other as other. This was the main problem. And because of such thinking, Levinas argues that can think of morality after the failure of morality. And similarly, Morley Ponty also uh, conceptualized that Cartesian notion of since Cartesian notion of subjectivity cannot do justice with the other, so we have to think about the alternative notion of 
subjectivity and they both propounded embodied notion of subjectivity as something which can do justice with the others and what is embodied notion of subjectivity embodied notion of subjectivity is something which is physical uh, bod- bodily self or physical self which is in the world which is historical self or which is within spatio temporal dimensions and it is engaged with the projects of the worlds it is now there is a difference between what happens so moral point is says that what what is self is something which is dialectically related with the other and both the self and the others are related with each other uh there is there is nothing which is the self cannot uh, objectify other because both are made up of the same thing same flesh elemental level according to morley body both self and other are equal while levinas also perceives embodied notion of subjectivity but his notion of subjectivity is bit different because he bases his notion of subjectivity on sensibility but morley body bases his notion of subjectivity on flesh of the world and what happens embodied notion of subjectivity is something on which we can base the the ground the notion of intersubjectivity because once there is subject once there is self which is embodied self then we can it can do justice with the other so what happens shipra one minute hello yes sir yes sir Actually, actually, yeah. am, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, what happens? Uh, through the embodied notion of subjectivity, they, they ground the notion of intersubjectivity. Now, their, their notion of intersubjectivity also differ, uh, differ. But both are based on embodied notion of subjectivity. Now, what is the intersubjective notion of Morley Ponty in 11 hours? Let's uh, understand it. Morley Ponty says that the way that the subjectivity is based on thesis his thesis of reversibility reversibility is the concept which morley party morley party says that where both self and other are related with, with each other both share each other's perspectives both share each other's intentions both share each other's uh, gestures such is the notion of reversibility and reversibility thesis is in turn based on his notion of flesh that is the fundamental ontology of intersubjectivity or subjectivity while levinas on the other hand bases his grounds his notion of intersubjectivity on his notion of irreversibility or thesis of irreversibility irreversibility is the thesis where both self and the other are not on equal terms are not on the same platform they are not both accessible to each other but there is irreversible relationship between self and other self is something which is not completely accessible to the other self can't comprehend the other equally because other is something which is transcendent other is something which is incomprehensible such is the notion of uh, levinas intersubjectivity and through this notion he says that because the main purpose behind uh, levinas notion of intersubjectivity is that to free the self to free to free the other from the clutches of the self otherwise the notion of self is something which conceptualizes the other which comprehends the other which grasps others which takes into the clutch which takes in, takes the other into the clutches of the self and throughout his writings throughout his um, work he has always tried to 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 take the other out of the clutches of the self that is why he propounded the very notion of intersubjectivity on his thesis of irreversibility that there is no reversible gearing between the self and the other while for morley ponty there is reversible gearing between the self and the other self is equally accessible to the other as other is equal uh, equally accessible to the self just as we are sharing the same platform so uh we are sharing each other's intentions we are sharing each other's just in philosophy cafe what is happening we are sharing each other's perspectives we are on equal platforms so in a way we are symmetrically or irreversibly related to each others 
we are listening each others we are sharing each other perspective share each other thoughts we are sharing each others uh, view points so such is the notion of morale point uh, morale point is notion of reversibility reversibility means his notion of subjective uh, introspectivity is based on his thesis of irreversibility uh, while for levinas such is not the privilege uh, available to the self self cannot completely grasp the other other always remains at the height and uh, other is transcendent now through these two concepts embodiment and his notion of uh, inter- their notion of intersubjectivity now we can talk about uh, reciprocity morley ponty bases his notion of reciprocity on his basis his thesis of irreversible sorry irreversibility meaning that reciprocity is symmetrical in nature symmetrical meaning both self and both the self and other are on equal platform there is nothing is at height so both are equally available to the other and reciprocity if there is reciprocity then there is recognition and if there is recognition definitely there would be justice with the other so this is the symmetrical notion of or such is the symmetrical notion of reciprocity of morley ponty but levinas on the other hand says that if we provide symmetrical notion to uh, symmetrical notion of uh, reciprocity then we cannot do justice with the other so he again uh, puts other at height so he propounds the notion of asymmetrical notion of reciprocity asymmetrical in the sense that self is unconditionally and unilaterally responsible to the other but other in turn is not responsible towards the self so other has privileges but self has no privileges self cannot claim anything in return but yes self is ever ready or self should be ever ready or self is always responsible towards the other so this is the con- uh, such is the conception of uh levinas notion of reciprocity and if self is and what is the mark of intersubjectivity what is the mark of uh, uh asymmetrical reciprocity self's unconditional responsible responsibility towards the other is the mark of asymmetrical reciprocity while for morley ponty what is the mark of intersubjectivity or sociality recognition i quote recognition of man by man is the mark of recognition or mark of intersubjectivity and if there is recognition on equal terms then definitely there would be justice towards the other but yes definitely what happens levinas criticizes he critiques not only the not only uh, entire history of western philosophy but also morley ponty that his notion of body could not provide justice towards the other the other remains within the clutches of ontology or within the clutches of being and even in the philosophy of moral ponty he moral ponty could not provide could not give could not provide the other as other could not provide the proper space to the others even in the philosophy of or philosophy of moral ponty other remains within the clutches of self or same but if we and some other feminist thinkers like sally fisher uh, shannon sullivan and judith butler they also criticize morley ponty's uh, notion of body that the other in the form of gender as other uh, morley ponty homogenizes the notion of body that there is no trans between the between different bodies but if we take into consideration different points of views of morley ponty definitely we cannot say that he he superimposes the things or he he reduces the other into the self although there is reciprocity although there is reciprocity or reversibility between the self and other but still there is uh let me take two uh, two instances one instance he okay. says that Yes, Can you switch on your camera? Switch off my camera? Switch on. Your camera is off. 
actually this is the problem why i facing when starting that is why it is getting uh, it is disturbing me disturbing my flow uh, okay i am unable to uh, present yes. properly because uh, okay. leave first but just rejoin me i will So, uh, meanwhile, I I I welcome Bhagat Oinam sir and Professor Chandra sir in our cafe. So you are muted. So you are muted. Thank you thank you thank you. Yes, yeah, sir. Namaskar, Doctor Chandra. Namaskar, Doctor Oinam. Namaskar, Namaskar. Bhagat sir is also here. Uh, he left. Okay. Has Rao sir is also here. Yeah. Has the speaker joined? No, he has joined, sir. Okay, I let him. I think he left. Yeah, he was here. <laughs> Dr. Rao sir is also here. <laughs> My senior, your student. <laughs> Hello, sir. Hello, Hello, sir. Hi, Shrah. <laughs> fine, fine. Hello, so it's very sir. nice. How are you? Good evening, good evening to all of you. I think there is a problem in uh, Dr. Chanda's uh, camera. So yes, let's yes. continue without the camera. Yeah. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Without the camera. I think we are yes, able sir, to hear yes, it. Yes, yes, sir. Just a second. Hello. Hello. Am I audible? Yes, 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 yes sir. Mm -hmm. You are starting actually happening, and it had disturbed from uh, dis disrupted my flow. Actually, no, what no, I, sir, if, if, uh, if it happens, then you can uh, continue without your okay. camera. So yes, but then let me take two instances of uh, Morley Ponty's account. Yes. Uh, see, where 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 uh, we uh, where we can say that. The other is not reduced into the self. First is the uh, introspective experience, introspective hand, uh, hand, touch, touch uh, experience. When my uh, he says that when my right hand touches my left hand, what happens? I, the hand which is touching right hand it becomes subject, and the hand which is being touched it becomes object. But there is no permanency in either. There is no permanent subject, nor there is no permanent subject, no permanent object. These rules get reversed. When my left hand touches my right hand, what happens? My right hand becomes passive and right uh, left hand becomes active. So there is a reversibility of role. Left hand becomes subject and right hand becomes object. Both are simultaneously taking place. This thing is taking place. This phenomenon is happening. But there is no superimposition of one on the other. So self is not superimposed on the other or other is not superimposed on the self. So difference remains intact. This is the first instance. Second, I am taking the intersubjective experience, intersubjective handshaking experience. When I shake, hand, hand, shake my hand with the other individual, what happens? I take his hand into my grip. So I am active. I'm self. And the hand which is in my grip, that is passive. So he's object for me. But this role again gets reversed when he takes my hand into my grip. 
and my hand becomes passive as object and his hand which is taking uh, uh, my hand to grip becomes active so that hand, his hand becomes subject what happens there is also simultaneous this this phenomenon is also simultaneously taking place but at the same time there is no superimposition between either between between self and other the difference remain as it is means other is not reduced into self nor self is reduced into the other there is just the reversibility between the subject and the object just roles are being reversed but if we say that or if we charge a small quantity that the other is being reduced completely into the self so such criticism is also not valid third when some feminist thinkers are also criticizing or critiquing sorry critiquing critiquing his notion of body just as i taken the sally fisher shannon sullivan and judith butler that his notion of body is very ambiguous very anonymous as if there is a huge animal whose bodies whose organs our bodies are but such is not the case how morley body says that if we take sorry ha huh, yes morley body says that if we take the individual instances so if we take the notion of situation then of course there is reversible gearing there is shifting of perspective alteration of roles between self and the other but the fact of the matter is that there is no alteration of situations just as in, in his phenology of perception i think in the last chapter he says that i am quoting him uh on the notion of uh situation he says that paul is suffering i quote paul is suffering because he has lost his wife or his his suffering because his watch has been stolen but i am suffering because paul is suffering not that i have lost my watch but i am suffering because he is suffering so in the intersubjective life world in sociality what is happening we are sharing each other's happiness and sadness paul is if paul is happy i am happy and i am happy paul is happy paul is sad i am sad i am sad paul is sad these are the just sharing our perspectives sharing of each other's intentions our roles but we are not sharing each other's situations because paul is in different situation i am in different situations so there is no alteration of situations to so paul is paul i am myself so nothing is just other is not reduced into self but definitely uh levinas gives absolute status to the other and he says that there is no justice with the other unless and until there is there is uh absolute status to the other if unless and until we keep the other holy other or completely out of the clutches of the self there is no justice there is no recognition with the other so both are both views are opposed to each other one is holding the smithical notion of reciprocity where there is reciprocity of each and everything in the intersubjective life world because following the tradition of uh, phenology calling especially hegger mohan de also says that or believes that being is always in the world it is not a historical it is not away from the world but it is within the within in the this very world but yes for levinas other is something which is absolutely other holy other it is completely transcendent and uh, other cannot uh, we cannot expect self cannot accept anything from the other but yes self should be absolutely responsible towards the other for him this this is the notion of uh, asymmetrical notion of reciprocity i don't know or i am not here to judge whose notions are whose notion is better but just i have kept it open for uh, panelists to comment and if there is any question then they can ask i think so my flow a little bit disturbed in between because of this uh, uh setting or i don't know because i don't know much about that technology so definitely i could not deliver 
as I should have been. But uh, I think it should be now open for discussion. Shipra? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, so much, sir. thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, sir. So that we, so that we can better contribute, sir. we can better uh, share our ideas. Since we are on a level, point in level. Yes, sir. That is reciprocity. <laughs> Yes. Yes. I, yes, sir. Uh, I would like to invite Chandra, sir, to begin the discussion. Yeah. <laughs> you are the senior most. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I am actually not the appropriate person to be uh, um, commenting, but uh, I have. Uh, I just would wonder that you know how the, does this whole discussion position itself in the larger debate of uh, philosophical debates. Number one, when we talk about the subject and object, uh, then we talk about subject and object in many ways. We talk about uh, the ontology of the subject and uh, object. We talk about the epistemic relationships of the subject and the object. And we also talk about the uh, question of normative uh, questions about how we treat the object. Uh, and I was wondering that uh, in the discussion as it was uh, presented, all the three seems to be very closely put together because the language is that the other is in the clutches of the self or it is entirely independent. Now, these have a very heavy kind of a normative load. Being in the clutches is actually not, uh, something that, you know, you're holding something not rightfully to be held. And transcendent means that you're being forever elusive. Uh, and in certain other cases, you'd like, as Maude Ponty said, that, you know, uh, in your vulnerability, when you open yourself to the other, uh, that's when a true dialogue happens. So that discussion of the self and the other is largely a situated discussion of uh, two subjects relating to each other in a social context. Uh, the other question, uh, so I was wondering that, you know, within the social world, how do people relate to each other? Uh, this is the question of which is largely seem to be addressed. The philosophical question about uh, knowledge of the subject of himself or herself, or knowledge of the subject of the other as an independent being, or the privacy of the subject are uh, questions about which I wonder what is the answer which is being attempted. Because if we put it in the uh, old framework of philosophy, the old framework of philosophy said that because we are linguistic beings and because we are ethical beings, they are essentially intersubjective. And because both language and morality are intersubjective, therefore human beings as language using people and human beings as ethical beings are essentially intersubjective. And this is an argument which you find in Aristotle, which antedates by centuries the argument subsequently given by Wittgenstein against privacy of language. So uh, because we are language users, language is learned socially, there is no question about us treating the other as uh, different or whatever. I actually am, my principal question to the whole uh, discussion is that Largely, the discussion is normative, and the presumption is that we all want to have a democratic dialogue. And in order to have a democratic dialogue, what is the kind of self that we need to imagine? So the question, uh, the decision is already taken about what kind of a polity that you want to have. And within that, you are asking that what kind of a subject makes sense. Because the question is, if I am not a democrat, if I am not a liberal, I don't need the subject to be my equal. I don't need a reciprocal sub subject. I need a subject which can be manipulated. So Hitler does not want a subject who's equal and reciprocal. He wants an absolutely manipulable object-like subject. So in, in this whole context, the normativity seems to be first decided, and then there is an ontology, and then a certain kind of an epistemic question is being addressed. Uh, so uh, I was just wondering that, am I right in getting this or because this whole language mm -hmm. is uh, very difficult for me to follow. Uh, yes, Jisar, thank you. Uh, may I respond? Yes. No? Uh, yes, yes, sir. Sure. Yeah. 
Yes, yes, uh, sir. You uh, very you truly captured the sense of uh, I think talk what I wanted to convey, although I could not uh, convey. Uh, yes, uh, Morley Ponty and Levinas. So you are you have rightly distinguished. Morley Ponty is talking on the basis of ontology, but Levinas on the basis of ethics or on the normative basis. That is why Levinas. Uh, gives absolute, absolute respect, uh, absolute notion of others, or he 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 follows the absolute notion of others, or uh, in a way to say that other is for the other, but it's again it's problematic for some time for uh, pragmatic purposes, for democratic purposes, when the other is transcendent, so transcendent, so holy other, so absolute, that just yes, there is there is problem. I also problematize in my uh, research that uh, such a notion, which is holy other, is problematic. But at the same time, if we talk about the other, uh, which is so sacred, because for Lebanon, the other is sacred, other is pious, uh, we cannot touch the other. And in its absolute sense, God is other for Lebanon. So this is something I think uh, such is the notion because I think his because of uh, this genocide and certain atrocities, so he always tries to 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 depreciate the others, so that there is no mixing with the self, with the conception of self. Because self, he says, or for him, self always manipulates, self always conceptualizes. Or other, he says, he criticizes all whole of the his, uh, history of Western philosophy is nothing but this is nothing but the ontology of uh, philosophy of ontology so that is why he says that let ethics be the first philosophy ethics means where self should be unconditionally responsible towards the care and concerns of the other so this is the normative aspect that is why he puts the other at certain height so that it could not uh, be manipulated just got manipulated by self but so far as morally wanted is concerned it's it seems very democratic, it seems very pragmatic, uh, just as we are here on virtual mode, we are on a symmetrical level, we are on the same platform, we are sharing each other's perspectives, thoughts, language. You have uh, talked about Wittgenstein. Definitely, Morley Ponty also talks about language, because language is such, such medium through which we understand each other. So this is very much introspective. The very nature of language is introspectivity. It's an introspective. So there is no problem about uh, any solipsism, about any the problem of other mind or something like that, or plurality. There is no problem of totalitarianism, plurality, imperialism, colonialism, if we are on the same platform. This is all about. So one is talking, uh, the philosophy is on the basis of ontology, another is the philosophy is on the basis of ethics. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sandra, for thought-provoking uh, arguments. Uh, before taking other questions, I would request our president, uh, Professor Balram Singh, sir, to give his remarks. Over to you, sir. Can, can you give me a few minutes to take some okay, questions? Sir, okay. I'll, 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 okay, sir. Thank okay, you. sir. Yeah. Yeah, just give me a few more moments. Yeah. Uh, Rahul, sir, kindly uh, join the discussion. Uh, yeah. May I ask a question, Shipraji? Yeah, yes, sir, yes, sir. Uh, uh, Alok, Alok sir. Oh, most welcome, sir. Join. Most welcome. Most welcome, uh, sir. Just join, but uh, hearing this last uh, comment and uh, response, just a question came to my mind that uh, where will you place Sath, earlier Sath in this discussion? Because for Sath, earlier Sath, other is hell. So I would like uh, some response from the presenter. Thank you. Okay, should I respond now? Yes, sir, yeah, sure. Please. Actually, actually, yes, Sath says that hell is the other. But it depends on the circumstances. It depends on, or we have to go to the history, historicity, our background from which these thinkers are responding. 
let us judge you by reason, by background. So there is a huge impact on his uh, philosophy, on his thought pattern. And secondly, he also himself experienced atrocities of the World War II. His, I think whole of his family was killed, assassinated during uh, World War II. So in this background, he is taking the other as absolute other. It's a saintly kind of thing. That other, just as in our tradition, also Baba Fri, Baba, Baba Nanak, and others, uh, they have given absolute importance to the other. That other is holy other. But we can recognize, we can respect the other only when our self gets melt. Gandhi says, uh, What is Gandhi's talisman? I will give you a talisman. Whenever your doubt or self becomes too much with you, apply a simple technique. Recall the face of a poorest person whom you have seen and say that and, and visualize whether the action you are going to take will be helpful to him. You will, you will get the answer and your self will melt away. My point is that Levinas other is not something which is creating problems for the self, but his notion of other on empirical level is something orphan, destitute, poor, widow. This is the Levina, this is the Levinasian other. But yes, at absolute level, the other is God for Levinas. So such is the notion, I think. But for Sartre, hell is the other. Yes, of course, sometimes if we perceive, we say that yes, it is always disturbing our solitude. It is disturbing our interiority. It is just disturbing our selfish self, egoistic self. It is uh, becoming hurdle in our way of doing things, in our development, in our progress, in our growth. So in this, that respect, we can say that other is hell or hell is the other. But otherwise, it's a very saintly kind of thing where uh, Levinas philosophize or conceptualize the notion of other? Uh, I think uh, other can be a dictator, other can be a capitalist, other can be a cruel uh, boss. Then no, how to no, sir, no. This, this whole notion of other as sacred or something like religious other in Levinas? Sir, I, sir, I actually, this, this pragmatic level will always remain problems. Actually, problems. If we see the history of philosophy, I think uh, just as John Stuart Mill also says that there is no tyranny than the tyranny of majority. So there is always conflicting relationship between majority and minority. So capitalism is not in minority. They are not a minority fellow. Our dictator is not a minority. It is self, dictator is self. The German nationalism or German nationalist or Nazi socialism, that is self. For Jews. So Jew is the other, Jew is in the minority. But German nationalism or uh, Aryan race, I think Hitler was very proud of that race. So it is the issue of the religious other. It becomes intolerable for the self. But self is always manipulating, persecuting, suppressing the other, not letting the other as other. In that uh, way, we can say other. Other is not which is self-sufficient or which is majority. Levinas is philosophers in that sense. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Alok sir. Thank you so much. Now, uh, may I request uh, Professor Balram Singh sir to join the discussion? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes I enjoyed it. I'm sorry I missed a little bit of uh, earlier on because I was in another program, but I enjoyed whatever I heard. And uh, what I was wondering, you know, in our village, there is a saying, never on the road, never on the How would that be considered here in the reciprocity, whether it's asymmetric or symmetric? Because in some way it is symmetric, because it's, you know, as long as being carried, the, sometimes the boat carries the, the cart, but sometimes, depending on when, if it is not in the water, then 
the card carries same um i think the beard you know the doubt beard so this is a, a reciprocal he can shave it off or um, keep his beard but what if it is i mean so right now he has black hair so he has black beard but what if it becomes white that's irreversible unless he uses mm-hmm. color so I, I, what i'm trying to say here it's just very natural uh, my first question and i know professor rakesh chandra knows my view because i met him in bhu what's so big deal about you know this uh, murli panti or levinas i mean this is so well known in my village you know thing happens so why can't we have this um this kind of philosophy uh based in indian i mean let let uh our speaker you know the, talk about that uh maybe he he brings his own philosophy i know i think he presented well uh dr ramesh chandra presented well thank you very much so that's one um there is more deep thing what is there is no symmetry anywhere as far as we know there is no symmetry no nobody ever who is going to be look like ramesh chandra no matter what uh, somebody tries to so it is a asymmetrical one way uh, the only th- the, the what i see here is the duality you're not seeing the multiplicity when you see multiplicity then it will not be uh, reciprocity but will be multiplicity and in multiplicity which then goes to uh infinite or anant which we can really even don't know so we kind of limit ourselves in this discussing so much about it without explaining or maybe there is something that i really didn't hear today so those are my comments what morley bonding is trying to convey is that there is reversibility between the dualism or this is not unbridgeable dualism both are bridged together that is why he conceives the embodied notion of subjectivity both mind and body something like psychophysical organism better to say in the uh, scientific terms so it's it's better to say psychophysical organism neither the pure mind is subject nor the pure body is subject but there is a intertwining intertwining of the chaos or there is there is a there is a uh, mixing of both difference and similitude so both are similar but again it's uh, at the same time both are not exact identical there is similarity but there is no identity right ramesh can i come in yes yeah, sure sir sure sure sir it's my it's my pleasure to hear right. you uh, you know uh, i would like you to consider uh, yes. uh, you know there the ontological question uh, uh, not uh, about what is the nature of the self huh? and in yes. that we you know the historical things that you know it might be just the mind or uh, just the body in case of locke or it is the uh, mind body or in case of strawson a more uh, logical kind that bears a bear of m and p predicates that's the idea of the self that how what do we consider to be the self and yes. what do we consider to be the person now this kind of uh, positioning a uh, theory also requires an argument that why am i saying that it is only consciousness why am i saying it's uh, only the body right. and for that we will have to find arguments both in case of levinas and morley ponty and i find that m- many a time they don't seem to be giving any argument and uh, then they are also then subsequently talking about <clears throat> the self as related to another self now this self of uh, because at the example that you are giving also uh, are troubles of you one hand holding the other hand and a reciprocal relationship of two hands one grasping the another uh, another hand are actually uh, governed by the same consciousness and in any case one hand is not the subject of the other hand uh, both the, uh, they, the the subject is the person whose hands they are so uh, the we have to be a little more cautious in using a uh, language because that is all that we have we are not experimental scientists like balram singh that who will show us something by experimental sciences what the only thing that we have at our resource is uh, language and descriptions so the question is that you know when we and that's why i was wondering that you know uh, uh, is descart talking only about the, the lonely subject and my answer is that actually he's not talking about the lonely subject at all if you uh, notice 
his discourse on method and meditations, he begins with a societally embedded individual only for therapeutic purposes of getting certainty. He says, let us suspend our judgment for a little while. And then we get primordially the primordial subject consciousness. That subject consciousness is immediately followed by God, which is then immediately followed by the restoration of the world. Because God cannot be a, a magician or cannot be a devil, and therefore the whole world is restored with all its sociality. And it is very clear that in uh, that case, if you were to ask him, what is the, why do you think that this principle is valid, that only those things which are clear, distinct, and uh, indubitable should be accepted, he said that principle is also valid only because of the veridicality of God. So I don't know why the whole continental tradition, so to say, and also sometimes many other people who call themselves analytic philosophy try to accuse uh, Descartes of a singular egocentric subject, including the feminist. He's certainly not that. And you just have to read the first four pages of any of his books, either his course or meditations. That's one. Secondly, I think that, as you said, that, you know, how do you treat the other? And uh, the, the question is now that uh, are you giving a normative principle that how should we treat the other? And in that, we find that there's a Kantian principle that we cannot treat the other as a end to a means only. We should, uh, means to an end, we should treat them as ends in themselves. And then we are all members of the uh, kingdom of ends, and that's the way he sees it. Now, that is the position which I think comes close to the discussion that you are giving. That the self as the other, uh, the other, uh, the other self also as a member of the kingdom of ends, and we are all to be treated, e treating each other with equal respect. Neither am I in the hold of the other in his clutches, nor the other is to be in the hold of me. So that Kantian heritage, which I think is the heritage of the phenomenalists, phenomenologists and the existentials, cannot be forgotten. And that Kantian heritage of a moral uh, agent is actually, again, a recipe which he's advocating, this is the way you should treat. And as uh, Professor Tandon was saying, this is not the way which in which we actually treat. We do not treat others necessarily in that way. So now the further question would be, why should we treat each other like that? Okay. Just because can't uh, say, so we'll have to have, all at all levels, we'll have to have an argument. Argument to define the self a particular way, argument to define the self and its epistemic status, an argument to define as a moral related to the other, dealing in a particular way of democracy and equality. So you'll have to have three arguments. Okay, sir. So uh, uh, the last one, because uh, earlier one I might forget, so I will ask uh, ask you. Uh, let me the, uh, let me start with the last one. Yeah. Although Kant was, I think, phenologist, he's considered a phenologist, but yes, his notion of morality is based on universal notion of morality. His notion is based on universal principles and laws. What Levinas is was what Levinas wants to convey is that the very face, the very face of the other, is nothing but calling the self for responsibility for taking care of the other. The very face of the other reveals that I should be unconditionally responsible towards the other. The very face of the poor, the, the very face of the destitute, the very face of the orphan and Widow, and whosoever is needy, but must be responsible. So, but what about what about the face of the devil? What about the face of the rich? What about the face of the not, oppressor? For for Levinas, devil is not the other, but other is someone who is persecuted, who is marginalized, who is underprivileged. But who is? You, but how can you legislate? How can you legislate? It's the face. face. No, no. See. And it's, for Levinas, it starts with the face. No, true. It, it's not based on universal principles uh, and laws. It starts with the very face because the face is the mirror of. No, face is if the face is the mirror, and I am Hitler, or I am Indira Gandhi during the emergency phase, or okay, I wouldn't say what I want to say <laughs> right now. But if that is what I see, my own face. Then in that particular way, my, uh, see, this is in fact getting definition. You are saying that the face is only the face of the poor. Why is it that, why is it that only the face of, and 
are we saying that the face of the poor is essentially a face of a person who's good? The, the poor might be wicked. The poor might be uh, avaricious. The poor might be subversive. Uh, the poor might be destructive. So the romantic idea that the poor, the destitute, and the widow are nice is actually again, also again we are sir again we are making a mistake. The poor we have given the definition of poor, hmm. but poor is someone who is really in need, who is really needy, who is really exposed, who is vulnerable. But, but he may be wicked. Vulnerable, vulnerable. vulnerable. No, no, no. Vulnerable, vulnerable, but wicked. There might be a peop, a, like a, a, at this particular time, a, a certain set of people who have been always bombarding the others might find themselves in a position in which they have no food. They become poor. Actually, they are what are, so, actually, what <laughs> so the question is, I mean, this is in fact a very important question. You cannot definitionally, you cannot definitionally make the poor noble. Of course, that is the point. That is the point. This so, phenomenon, so, especially so Levinas, is arguing against the definition. So, right. So the poor are needy. Is is definition. No, poor are needy is tautological. Anybody who's needy is poor. This is a tautology. The question yeah. is, what kind of attitude should I have towards the other? Depends upon my normativity. I might see that you know this person who has tortured me for all this while and who has been in a position of power all his life. Now he's poor. Now I might feel very vindicated that you here he deserves this. Sir, it's a very saint. Levinas is talking about the normative aspect of other. It's very nor it's very, very saintly kind of thing. Meaning that just Gandhi says that if somebody um, slaps you on the one cheek, you turn the other cheek towards him or her. So it's a it's a it's a kind of unless and until our self gets smelched, our ego gets smelched, we come out of our interiority, reach towards the other. There is no possibility of introspective, healthy introspective relation. Levinas is talking in that sense. But yes, your second question about Descartes. So Descartes in his sixth meditation, he's saying that I am mind, or I am myself, thinking is my nature, and I can exist without body. He has, you can see, uh, in his sixth meditation, he says, categorically, he says that I am disembodied self, Thinking is my essential nature, and I can exist without body. And can. body is something which is non thinking extended uh, I thing. I can, but he doesn't say that I must. Please be careful. He said, <laughs> I, can, <laughs> no, I can exist as a subject without the body. That's what he's saying. Okay. Okay. So, but the question is that the moment he gets back God, because he said, I have an innate idea of God, and that cannot exist unless there is a God, he restores God. And with God, the subsequent thing is that, that everything that exists in and around me actually is restored. So he's not talking, he's saying it is possible for the subject to exist without the body, but he's not saying that he must. And that, I think, as a philosopher, it is very important for us to see. The possibility of an, uh, of an isolated subject without the body is entertained by Descartes, but not by Strawson and not by many others. And even in case of Descartes, the, if you look at the whole stream of argument, the stream of argument is actually restoration of everything. Does he say that the world does not exist in the end of the meditations or discourse? No, the world exists because God cannot be a deceiver. So though the self without the body can exist, as a matter of fact, we are embodied selves. But for him, the uh, self is constituting self. It is just yeah. constituting the others. It is not considering the other as the other. But it's just constituting other from his own, or, uh, through his own concepts, through his own categories of understanding. And this is the violation of the other. But as well, and if there is a body yeah. self, then it is in the world, it is experiential self, and it is experience the others on par with one's own self. So this is the point, but somehow you can. Uh, so, but but Deca, Deca, for Descartes, uh, self is equated with the mind. He he is not saying that uh, disembodied mind uh, is must, but uh, self is equated with the mind. Body is yes. not equated with the mind. Exactly. That, that he said that I can self. exist. Not yeah. thinking. We can we can we can exist without the body. Disembodied mind is possible, but self is equated with the 
consciousness or mind for six him. six meditation yeah six meditation exactly that's don't don't see but you have to look at the whole context of the whole thing what does he get you back he begins with the world and gets you back the world doesn't he he begins yeah. that we exist in the world and he says that let us get uh, let us get a firm foundation of our knowledge of the world how do we get that let us use a principle we use the principle and then through using of the principle first we get the idea of a uh, of a self or a knower who whose very identity consists in thinking yes. actually sir sir the it doesn't it stop it doesn't it stop it it doesn't stop yes it doesn't but stop here sir does. here we are sharing the entire debate is about knowing self and experiential self so cartesian self is knowing self that is yes. epistemological self and here we are talking about the counter as a counter perspective that is experiential self phenological self this See, is the only point the otherwise difficulty. we are enrich each other the difficulty is that uh, the yes. languages of, of uh, different philosophers uh, yes. change uh, say for instance in indian philosophy the mind body dichotomy or the mind sense dichotomy cannot be maintained because manas is supposed to be the sixth indriya ha na so now you cannot have uh, somebody who as an empiricist who believes that uh, knowledge is through experience because mind is also say, taken to be one sense organ in the case of descartes also when you are talking about mind and consciousness have you really noticed what does he mean by mind he means by mind feeling consciousness emotion everything have you seen that section and basically said what is mind mind is feeling emotion knowledge experience all of that now if that is if that is mind then the experiential self cannot be separated it has become so fashionable because you typically think that you know the foreign scholars are very careful they are not they are very very clever the old a lot of scholars for descartes misses out on the point that when he talks about mind he is talking about mind as different only from matter he is not talking about mind as different from experiencer experience feeling emotion reasoning all of them are part of mind so this mind and self is actually not if you are trying to make a distinction between the experience and self you can't you cannot it has become so popular and so many books are written on that that we think nini would take care experiencing self is bilkul experiencing self kyunki experience sense emotion feeling is sub consciousness ke forms the the dualism that he has is not between mind and experience the dualism that he has is between mind and matter ye to ba mein padha diya tha tum logo ko sir whatever you whatever you said it might be right but just you are saying that it's very heavy loaded words of just as morley ponty so morley ponty just as you are saying that how is uh, how can we uh, how can body be a self uh, how can you say that you have no laboratory indian philosophy also says that our body is made up of four elements morley ponty at the same time also says that at the matter is nothing our uh, flesh of the world flesh of world is nothing but element that is earth water fire and the air so for philosophy there can't be something like to prove but yes we can constantly engage with issues we can constantly engage with different perspectives or if there if there would have been no tikars what would have been to philosophy because i have a huge respect for dikart i am only wanting to call your attention to that the dualism is not between an experiencing self and a, a ra- rational self the dualism is between only matter and consciousness experience feeling emotion ratiocination uh, logical reasoning uh, all of it is part of consciousness so ikka is talking about a conscious self so experiencing self is the conscious self thank, thank you sir Thank, thank you, thank you, thank you. Sir. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. May I request uh, Dr. Rahul uh, to join the thank discussion? You, yeah, thank yes, sir. Thank you, Shukla, for allowing me. I mean, I have been thoroughly enjoying the discussion uh, between uh, Ramesh Chandra and Professor Rakesh Chandra. It has been really taking to the next level. But I also have uh, some uh, 
kind of difficulty in understanding Descartes. I mean, though uh, this is a quite possible that even Descartes has also discussed this uh, experiential self, but I think uh, that might be a very uh, uh, secondary remark, a very passing remark that uh, Descartes might have made. What largely he has been discussing about self is what Ramesh Chandra and others have been uh, focusing on. It is epistemological self that he is talking about. Self which is completely devoid of any kind of matter in it. So it is absolute and pure and universal, universal self. And that's why the kind of duality that uh, Ramesh Chandra is talking about coming from Lev Levinas and Morley Ponty is that, I mean, in Descartes' framework, this kind of duality will not arise between self and other, where, I mean, the self and other is a very experiential self. And that's why there might be different kinds of experiences of the people, and that's why there might be a different self-understanding. But in a Cartesian framework, this duality between self and other doesn't arise. Why? Because there is a very cognitive universal self. And that's why the question of, of self and other will not arise. It will arise only in the framework where the self is embodied self. And when it is an embodied self, of course, people might have might, might have a different sort of experiences dependent uh, on their, their context, their location, their history. And that's why this idea of recognizing others as a, as a moral obligation or moral face uh, will arise, but then this will always be a normative. I mean, I have a difficulty in understanding that just because of the face of other will, will uh, elicit kind of sense of uh, obligation will, will not uh, come into existence until unless you are bind to the other in a certain way where that, that this uh, moral obligation will come. I mean, you can feel this sense of moral obligation towards your own loved one, your own family members or friends. But when it comes to see yourself in a distant relation with others whom you have never encountered any, any uh, uh, I mean, where you did not have any facial encounter, right? Their just face of the other will not give you a sense of moral obligation. So uh, this is what I would like to say. And if uh, Ramesh Chandra would like to uh, respond to this, but it has been really, uh, uh, enlightening and really uh, uh, good to listen to you after a long time. Thank you, Ramesh. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, thank you very much for bailing me out. And uh, secondly, uh, so far as Levinas notion of other is concerned, so yes, we should, ourselves should be able to reach towards the other. Other in the sense that though one who is far off other, there are two types of others for him, which are in immediate relation with the self, which you just have talked, and the other which is larger humanity, are far off other. So, but just even if it is impersonal other, with which, which is not our dearest and nearest one, but yet his face, his face uh, reminds us of our unconditional responsibility. Is, this is the just this is just the look of the face. Our face of the other reminds us that I should be responsible towards his ability or uh, towards his needs, cares, and concern. So face of ethics for Levinas, ethics starts with the other. It's not based on certain principles or already conceptualized principles, universal notions of morality, nothing like that. It is the embodied self. And embodied self's face is the locus of morality. Its ethics starts, begins, and ends with the face of the other. So this okay. is what I. Uh, may I ask a small question? Yes, sir. Can a face lead to such type of response if there is no conception of moral self? 
even so I think uh, whether Bilevi Nas assumes some sort of moral self, uh, maybe uh, not epistemologically uh, or epistemologically, I, can, I can't say, but is there any sort of assumption about this self, moral self in Bilevi Nas? This is my question. No, sir. No, no, not at all. There is no assumption, no, no conception, no reflectivity. It, it is everything. It, everything is being operated at pre-reflective level, primordial level, pre-reflective level. There is no reflectivity. There is no conception. If there is choice, because self has no choice other than to be responsible towards the other. If self has choice, then self is dominant self. Self is imperialistic self. So self has no option. Self has no prerogative, no privilege. Self has no choice, no assumption, no preconception. Just the face of the others makes him, yeah, commands him that I should be responsible for so and so or the other. So and so means for the other. So there is no reflectivity. There is no chance for any choice. If there is choice, then self has freedom. So this so is the curtailment of freedom. Does it not mean a type of utopian self which does not exist in this universe? Uh, or in this not, universe? Sir, I a think very, very minuscule uh, percentage of people like Levinas exactly. or Buddha maybe <laughs> like that. Right, right, right. It's very minuscule because it's kind of saintly. Who has himself dissolved completely? Whose ego is completely melted away? Only then we can uh, think about the other in like terms. Otherwise, we cannot. It is saints. It is saints. So this is uh, uh, some sort of unless and unless we become saints, there is no possibility of this type of this type of model response. Do you want to say this? No, my by saint, I I don't mean that saint means that uh, defined saint. Anybody can, anybody can be sent, meaning that who is concerned about the others, but unconditionally concerned about the others, without any conception, without any uh, preconception. Sir, so, sir, so, sorry to interruption. Uh, we are running out of time, so please allow me to close the discussion or uh, suspend this discussion for the next session. Uh, thank you, Alok, sir. You please uh, join us for the next session. And uh, I, I, I would like to invite or request my colleague, Dr. Shruchi Singh, for a vote of thanks. Shruchi, over to you. Namaste to all of you. Namaste. And I would really like to thank Dr. Ramesh Chal for this successful discussion and topic. It was really nice to hear to you. And of course, the discussion that followed. First of all, uh, the topic was introduced by, I mean, Rajkumar sir introduced the topic and then you carried on this discussion with really well. And uh, uh, Professor Chandra, Dr. Alok Tandon, Balram sir, and Rahul Maria, all these people also really brought out beautiful uh, uh, topic and uh, sorry discussion and I would really like to thank to you and Dr. Shipra for this session. Thank you so much Shruti ji and uh, so uh, thank, uh, thank you uh, Ramesh Chandra ji. Thank you for, very much Shipra and all for listening to me, for bearing me, tolerating me as a self. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure I'm sure I'm sure yeah, it benefits sure lots are, of us. You are a saintly self. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, you look like that. <laughs> it was great meeting you, Ramesh. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very thank much. You, sir. Thank you, Rahul, sir. So, thank you. Uh, thank you all. Thank you so much for joining us. And please stay connected with us for the next session on 16th February. The next speaker is uh, uh, already here. Uh, Dr. Varun Sharma. Yeah. yeah. I, I was I was very much guessing that Varun. Yeah. <laughs> so, 
मून <laughs> 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 हार्टली थैंक्स टू रमेश सर Please uh, stay connected with us for the next session. Thanks Thank so you. much. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.